Thank you for joining us. I'm Erin Gregg, joined by our production team of Lubbock ISD TV students, and we're excited to share how Lubbock ISD focuses on every child every day. Many of our campuses have unique programs that highlight different cultures. At Lubbock High School, Ballet Folklorico shares traditional dances from different regions across Mexico. We visited with the performers to learn how the program has impacted them. I started dancing when I was three years old. For senior Gabriela Ramirez, Ballet Folklorico is a way to continue her love of dance and celebrate her heritage. Because this is where I can express my true talent and express my feeling towards this culture because it's my culture. I chose Ballet Folklorico because I'd always seen it at like the Civic Center on like special events and I knew I wanted to do it. Senior Cheyenne Perez has been part of the Lubbock High team for all four years of high school. You kind of just watch yourself grow as a dancer through the four years. Like you, before you don't even know what you're doing, like any of the steps or anything. And now we know like multiple different regions and a variety of many songs too. I feel like we've grown a lot together. At first, it's really intimidating. It looks like a lot, but Senora Lara, she does a really good job of breaking everything down. Um, and we all, we all have grown together to be a really good, strong team. And this team dedicates a lot of time to the program. It's like a nonstop thing. Like we rep everything like multiple times until we can get it like perfect or almost close to perfect. We dance in almost every single region and they all have different dresses to them and they all have different meanings. We're at a standard where we want to be the best, so we like push ourselves to be the best. But it's not only about competition. I think this program is really, really special, for Lubbock especially, because it's introducing a different culture. It opens up doors to people coming in, and it takes a lot, and it's really important, and I think, I think what we're doing is important. Zachary Krasarek Gentry is joining us in the studio today. Zachary is the director of theater at Lubbock High School, and we're talking about a very special achievement by the LHS One Act Play team. So, yes. Yay. So I'm so excited to be here and talk about the team this year. So Lubbock High Theater is going to state. Uh, Lubbock High appeared at the state meet in 1954. Um, so we are excited to return to the state yes, meet. Long in, overdue, yes, long overdue, as you said. <laughs> 2021. So we're excited to get to share our story on a state stage with the entire state of Texas. Well, and we were talking just before this that the last time a Lubbock ISD team went was 1987. And so it's been a long time yes. for Lubbock High and Lubbock ISD. Yes, so ma'am. So we're very excited to get to get to represent the district. and. So tell us a little bit about the performance. Right, so um, our show is called The Sweet Science of Bruising. It is a fairly new play. We are one of five high schools in the state that got permission from the playwright to perform it. Um, we are the only sweet science going to state, so that's a very cool feeling. We will be the first sweet science on the state stage. Um, but the show focuses on four women um, in London in 1869. They're all from very different walks of life, but they all want the same thing. They want freedom, equality. Um, and so what they decide to do is take it into the boxing ring. So we have some really cool, unique moments in the show. Our kids have learned to box. Um, they're doing a great job being emotional and they're they're so invested in the performance. So tell me a little bit about when you heard that you had advanced. What was the feeling from the team, from the kids, from the coaches? Um, for me, I was just kind of in shock, but the kids were excited. I have videos, I have like four different videos and they're just screaming and crying and hugging each other. So I love that it's on camera so that I can relive those moments. Well, we always like to give a plug to fine arts, um, yes. so just in general. Um, tell us about the benefit of students being able to have the opportunity to participate in fine arts like theater. So especially in one act play, but in theater in general, it creates bonds that last a lifetime. Uh, our one act play team is very much a family. They, you know, they fight like a family. They love each other like a family. Um, it's also been really cool to watch kids who are very, very shy kind of come out of their shell and, 
and find their, their place in our department. So it just, theater gives the kids a chance or somewhere to belong. Well, we are incredibly proud Thank of you. Lubbock High School Theater. We know that you're headed to uh, the state yes. meet yeah. competition. So, I don't know yes. what the official the term is yes, for it, just to state. And so um, we just wish you the best of luck whenever Thank you, you um, get competing on the state level. We're just happy that you're representing Lubbock ISD and Lubbock High School. Yes, ma'am. We're so excited. Students' busy schedules can sometimes mean running from school to activities without time to stop for a meal. Fortunately, we have great community partners who help make sure our students stay well fed. Phyllis joins us again to share more about Raising Canes and their support for Lubbock ISD. Probably 2013 is when I personally got involved. Christina Thompson is a restaurant partner for Raising Canes on University Avenue. And we were just doing very basic like fundraisers, give back nights, mostly at the elementary school level. After seeing the impact the restaurant could make for students, Thompson became more involved with Lubbock ISD. I got involved with the Culinary Arts Committee. We got a lot of great interns. They lasted for several years here at Raising Canes and one of them is actually still here, so that's awesome. And more recently, Thompson and the Canes crew provided meals for Lubbock ISD TV students working live sports broadcast for the district. When they're going to film the games and stuff, just really supporting them and, and that shuffle going quickly from school to the football games and not getting the opportunity to eat dinner before they go. Thompson says supporting students is just part of the culture at Raising Canes. Anytime we see the need in a community to, to get involved, especially when it comes to education, I know sometimes people don't necessarily view going to a football game as education, but what those kids are learning behind the scenes and and doing things that are gonna further their career if TV is something that's ended, it's something that we wanna be a part of. And she invites students searching for a career opportunity to explore the options available at Raising Canes. Yeah, this is my restaurant. This is the one right across from Texas Tech University. We have our newest location on 4th and Frankfurt, um, and that's been there for just a little over a year or so. So we do have four locations here in Lubbock now. And if any of your students are looking for any kind of career opportunities going into the summer to, just to get their first jobs, um, definitely reach out to us. We are currently hiring for all day parts at all restaurants. Thank you, Phyllis. If you would like to become one of our partners, just log on to lubbockisd.org slash pie, or you can contact Phyllis directly with the information on your screen. Now let's go on location. on location at Wester Elementary School for a very cool Scratch Kitchen event and I'm going to start by letting my guests introduce themselves. All right, hello, my name is Sergio, I'm the chef manager from Aramark. And I'm Stacey Hurst, I'm the principal here at Wester Elementary. Great, okay so chef, we're going to start with you and so tell us what Scratch Kitchen is, what is this about? All right, so basically what we're doing here is try to make some recipes from scratch like the name says it and we're trying to have the kids try new stuff. And so they can get involved, we give them a little bit of uh, some check cards so they can let us know if they like it or if they're not too familiar with the stuff, then we just talk to them about it. We try to, to interact with them by talking about the food more than anything uh, for them to give us some ideas and then in the future, we might be able to implement them on menus and try to help them to expand their taste buds, basically. Yeah, and so it looks like a delicious lunch. It looks like tacos. And so tell us a little bit about how you work with the kitchen staff to prepare the meal. Okay, well, on that one, we try to use ingredients that we don't normally use, exactly for the same reason to try the, to have the kids try new stuff. So with the crew, what we do is, um, I come, I, I show them the recipe, we start cooking it, we prepare for it, um, and then we just try to have the crew as involved as possible. So if this gets to make it on, the, on future menus, they will know and they'll be comfortable cooking it. Very cool, and so Ms. Hurst, tell us, you know, this is, happen this is happening around the district, but how cool is it today that we're at Western and to have this opportunity for your students to try these new foods? Oh my gosh, it is awesome opportunity. And our students are just raving about how delicious the meals are. They are really enjoying, I think, something totally different than our normal menus that we have. And so you got to select some judges from each grade level, so tell us a little bit about that. Well, we uh, reached out to the teachers and they selected the top three students in each grade level 
that we're always modeling the right behavior in the classroom. So they are model judges and our model students in the class. Well, that's pretty awesome. And we know that you were having some deep conversations over there with the students <laughs> about the food. And so um, when they were talking to you, what are some of the feedback they gave you about the, about the meal today? Well, it depends a lot on the kid and their grade because we start talking could be about the culinary career all the way up to video games. <laughs> so we try, we, I try to keep it uh, engaging for them so they're not bored or so they can actually enjoy because that way they can connect this event or the food with a moment that they are actually enjoying. Well, what a wonderful opportunity for the kids and um, thank you to Aramark and Chef Sergio for making this happen for our students and we just appreciate you taking some time to visit with us today. The first graduating class of Monterey High School recently made a donation to their alma mater. And as Carol Alonzo shows us, the Plainsman class of 1956 is just as spirited in the support of their high school as they were 65 years ago. Old school, original, classic, vintage, Call them what you want, but they were the first. The first graduating class of Monterey High School, the class of 1956. Well, it's, some things just don't change. You know, that's, that's and even 65 years after graduating, these Plainsmen still have the same pride they had as when they first chose Scarlet and Columbia Blue as their school colors. Well, we've just kept up with Monterey over the years, and like I say, the pride of being the first graduating class for all of us uh, is just uh, the reason we want to stay in touch and do all we can for Monterey, and, and we haven't done as much as we would like to, but uh, when we can, we do like to help on projects that are worthwhile. A uh, bottle of water fountain, and I think that is a great, great deal. And, Monterey High School was built to help fill the need of a growing community and ease overcrowding at Lubbock High School. In the beginning, for some, the split was bittersweet. But soon, the class of 56 saw the potential and possibilities of forging their own path. After about two or three weeks, we decided, hey, this might be a pretty good deal. <laughs> and, uh, we had a really good time in Monterey and made a lot of good friends that uh, some of them came from Lubbock High, but we made a lot of new ones. And uh, we had a committee to do a lot of things like, you know, the colors, the songs, all of that sort of thing. And that was, to me, the most fun because we got to make some decisions. At our meetings, we had some very, very spirited uh, conversations. Uh, <laughs> I lost most of my choices, but that was okay because I'm proud of what we did select finally. So, and it was an honor just to represent the class throughout the year. So, uh, it was fun. The whole situation was fun. It was a great, great experience for, all, I think, all of the graduating class. All right, guys. Thank you, Carol. Monterey's class of 56 says they plan on having reunions as long as members are willing to get together. Coming up on the calendar, our second six weeks of the final nine weeks of school ends on Friday, April 30th. We'll send our final progress reports of the year home on Thursday, May 6th. Remember, you can always check out your students' progress with our online gradebook, and you can find the link on our Lubbock ISD app. It's free and easy to download from Google Play and the App Store. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next week to highlight more great opportunities only in Lubbock ISD. This has been a production of the students and staff at Lubbock ISD TV.